This is a two-way humidity control kit we got. This one's for guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of them, but I could only fit one of my purse. Does anyone play a guitar? Alan, you play Alan Park. You play guitar? I do play a little guitar, You want to keep yeah. your guitar fresh? You have that's to. For you. Yeah, that's for you, man. I mean, have you seen the shape of the thing? There yeah. you go. You know, that's for you. Oh, thank Merry you very Christmas. much. Two-way humidity Christmas control from Bovida. Thanks very much. If you didn't play guitar, I'd be very surprised. <laughs> 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 I it's time to pick up guitar lessons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Natish, Yvette, and Melissa are here. Uh, we thought we'd bring in our uh, one of our regular co-hosts, uh, Natish, who pops in from time what to time. Up? He's really into the recreational side of marijuana. Yeah, I'm uh, recreational right now. <laughs> 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 it's like a water park in his mind. It's, <laughs> that's a good time. And, and Yvette, you're great. Girlfriend's yeah. heavily involved. Yeah, yeah. spliffs. Yeah, yeah. I found, I found I've her actually her. known them for how m maybe a year now. Ago. Yeah, just didn't realize who. Yeah, I didn't know that week. it was him last week. Over the I had phone? no idea that like we, I, we I know was who speaking to him. Yeah, we've known it's each other. Because she's racist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, who's that Raj Singh person? <laughs> Not at all. Uh, I just know I'm way better with faces than names. Uh huh. That's okay. So. You know them. And, and Yvette, let's just quickly, uh, Yvette, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Yeah, far, uh, far, far too uh, good looking to be uh, with uh, Natish. Just putting that out there. <laughs> He's very funny. Yeah, well, funny. <laughs> I, as, as, uh, <laughs> That's a way of her agreeing with you. Well, he, he is rather homely, but the giggles do come fast and thick, so I put up with it. Much. I always say I'm a six and my wife's a 12, and I'm married a 12, and I'm not funny, so it must mean, and I'm not rich, I must have a big <laughs> but <laughs> So Natish, I, I, I know you got a huge. Basically, so what I'm saying. <laughs> That's why it's radio. <laughs> and Yvette, what's that? You're, you're, uh, you're, you go by the name Yvette Spliffy? Spliffs. Spliffs. Spliffs McKenzie. Spliffs yes. McKenzie. Yeah. Spliffs McKenzie. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Play on Spuds McKenzie. Yeah. Right? yeah. And that all works. Don't get that. And you just, you do, you have a big Instagram following. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It cool. It's kind of just by accident, though. Good for you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a very loyal community, though. That's yeah, a very supportive of one another. Yeah, exactly. Now, you were not able to be here last week? No, I was not invited. Oh, God. No, I didn't. Look at the way I brought that home. That's the mark of a guy that doesn't normally host a show. I'm asking a simple, nice question. It's like, oh, yeah. And I'm just, like, standing here on the spray. I'm not even taking the shot. I'm not. No, it's okay, Alan. You just won't be asked back next week. It's fine. <laughs> so, what else is terrible? Uh, Melissa, we do this uh, nice 420 cannabis report. Brought to you by Boba, by the way. Two-way uh, humidity control pack. Set it a bunch of times. Great team over there. Uh, they're out of Minneapolis. List, but you can get the stuff in a hundred different stores across Canada. Fantastic. Also, you can get it on Amazon.com, or of course, just go to bovidainc.com. And that's I sort use of them. Main. I use them in my weed bags all the time. Awesome, <laughs> all the time. Oh, that's the secret. Other cannabis use, bags. Right? It's not so secret. Cannabis, cannabis, bags. cannabis bags. We're ending the stigma. And you, uh, you have a report today. I do. Yeah. So last week, actually, the Ontario province. Oops, sorry, my bad. The Ontario province put out a online cannabis survey, that, which is open until July 31st. So they're actually the third province slash territory to have opened a survey, and Alberta was first, followed by Northwest Territories. Um, so the cool thing about the survey is that you can go on and kind of put your input and fill out the survey and say, hey, like, this is what my opinion is on legalization. So it's giving Ontarians an opportunity to have a say in legalization. And do they look at it and go, oh, this one's for, <laughs> tear it up. Next. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know. Like I, I just know that they're actually trying to collect data. Trying to collect data. Which okay. is important. It's anything like a comedy competition. They are <laughs> yeah. just ripping them up. I don't think they're ripping them up. Um, but yeah, so, so the, some of the things I wanted to talk about today were age and cannabis and driving. So with Oh, the, good. Yeah, so with the Cannabis Act. How they, old do you have to be to drive under cannabis? <laughs> they're two separate. I know. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, to, I'm, I'm I once again trying to host the show a little bit. You're, you're doing <laughs> a phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Did you, you, you medicate? before you came in today? I did not. Oh. Yeah, maybe that's, surprising. Maybe that's right? why you're not that so surprising. focused. Yeah, no, I was in a bit of a hurry, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But um, uh, anyway, so tell us about the driving and the, and the yeah. I so so the, the topic of age came up. That was one of the first things in the survey. And in the Cannabis Act, it actually says that the age is 18, whereas in the Ontario survey, they're saying the age will be not, they're asking questions as if the age will be 19. Don't you think Kathleen Wynne looks exactly like like Orville Redenbacher. Oh, hey! <laughs>
Cannabis, cannabis cream. cream. <laughs> I mean, if anybody needs a little something on, you know. Yep. I mean, it's not even a sexist comment. No, I'm no. so sorry. You look like a popcorn vendor. <laughs> Can we go it's straight to her fault. after they medicate too? I find uh, it very difficult to take uh, her seriously. Her brain, I, lo- her brain looks like popcorn. <laughs> it, it does. I keep so automatically putting a little bow tie on her neck, even though it's not there. I see it anyhow. So funny. <laughs> Kathleen Lou's. Kathleen, wait, if you're listening to this, come to my next show. <laughs> Please. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? Should it be 18 or 19? Or what's your guys' opinions? Alan you Park. Have? I think it should be. Um, I think it should definitely be 19. Mm-hmm. And I realize there will be 18, 17, 16, and 15 year old people that you know go against that advice. But I think it should be 19. That said, uh, when it wasn't in existence at all, I, I smoked it when I was 15. Mm-hmm. So, you know, come and get me. But I, I, and I know what you mean. It's, um, and I agree with you. It should be a certain age, and you might as well keep it to the drinking age. Yeah. You might as well. It, it, it seems like that is the logical, consistent approach. Not, it is, and, but not across the board, though. Not with everything. And yeah. I do want to hear about your age thing. And dr- so the age thing yep. is strictly on, uh, on on how young you can be to use it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For well, for recreational. Yeah. Right? I say recreational. I say eighteen. You say 18? Just because if you're gonna put a number on it, we have to do that. But kids fourteen to seventeen are still gonna have yeah. easier access to it from their friends than anybody else. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I didn't ask you. And the only reason why I say 19 is because everyone's going to do it exactly yeah. what everyone's saying. It's well, just like booze. Everyone had booze before, but you, you got to know that it's good for the legality purpose. You got to be of sort of what is, I think, a more mature mindset legally to make that decision. Mm-hmm. And also, to yeah. be honest, it helps you in a way if you're younger and do fuck up by something, by being a juvenile in that circumstance, or using like it actually is. A benefit by having an older age for yeah. you to, it, it, by, by the law. Well, because let's see a generation. Let's see at least one generation of people who have learned about what cannabis is in school and talk about it as mm-hmm. a substance rather than just going, oh, the children, I hope the children will be okay. And then now they're 19 and smoking the crazy weed. Yeah. It's like, why don't you learn about this Let's stuff about in the it. first place? They don't spend a lot of time on that in school. They tell you about how dangerous it is and it's this terrible thing. And uh, and they leave you alone as though you won't ever come across this. You know, mm-hmm. like mortgages and money and other things they don't teach you in it, school. It's, it's, <laughs> I think the whole curriculum is just terrible yeah. on what they're teaching children. I've always maintained that. Even from things to, uh, say, assimilation into Canada. Yeah. I think that should be a part of a, curric- a curriculum. Just to learn about our ways, like like learn about, you know, that way people think we're, we're, we're it's beautiful that we're diverse, but when there's, when there's maybe like uh, citizens that have a different approach to, say, treating uh, gay marriage. Well, that's right. not the way it is here in Canada. No, I think we need to break it down even more simply. Have you been to the Eaton Center? Anybody that's been, if you you've been to the Eaton Center once, how can you not get behind mandatory escalator lessons? I mean, what <laughs> is going on? Why do you have to stand on the left side of the thing? You can stand on the right side. There's no respect anymore. There's no respect. No one understands. Okay. Oh. They don't get about. it. And they look at, and people say, oh, it's an immigrant thing. You know, a lot of people coming from different countries. You can't blame them. Bull****. Have you ever been to England? I mean, if you go to London and, and you're on any kind of an escalator on the wrong side, some old lady's going to shove an umbrella up your <laughs> You know, normally you got to pay for that. Are you speaking that. from personal but experience? That, I am. I am speaking from, yeah, you can't go there and screw up on the escalator. I'm, you're I'm, hear I might it. just stand on that side it. in London. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got to stop London. Yeah. It's just Let's the stop. notion that, like, my standing still needs to hold up your <laughs> schedule. Like, what if you're on the way here and you're kind of a little bit behind and I'm just standing, oh, yeah. Just standing on the left side. And I can easily stand on the right side. And just politely ask you to move. Yeah, people don't. I have been down that road. They, they just it's, 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 what? it's entitlement, right? What's this guy? He wants to go somewhere at a different speed than me? What's hot? Don't like this at all. I tap him out of the way. I get him to move all the time. Oh, I thought you like you make him tap out like you have seen. You put him, you put him in some sort of sleeper. <laughs> That's next. If they don't go to these lessons. That's next. Melissa Rolson, let's continue. So um, what do you think it should be the age? Um, you know what? There's so many factors. I think 18, like the Cannabis Act saying 18, I think that that's a fair age. Um, I was reading a CAMH site a little bit earlier, and there's actually a study that reported 
that 26% of Ontario students in grades 7 to 12 used cannabis at least once in the previous year. Yeah, and once. And 3% sure. reported daily use in the past four weeks. And that was done in 2009. So the, the issue with that is, is I remember being a high school student and being yeah. like, I don't want to tell the truth. Like, they're going to come after me. So right. um, is this data fully correct? I don't know. Should they redo this, this survey? Yes, because this was done in 2009. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, like, people are using this cannabis and I've actually used cannabis when I, I started when I was about 15 and I stopped when I was 18 because I wanted to be an adult. I'm just happy you're 18 now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I, I know, right? I'm like, hey, hey, I'm like I'm like, to these reports, I never asked. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm, 20, I'm 25. <laughs> Thank 20. God. <laughs> I look 18 though, yeah. so it works out, right? Sorry, a little bit. So when and then so basically I found out when I was 18 that I was actually self-medicating. So that was just my own personal experience with it. So I I think that there needs to be obviously more surveys done, more studies done, more research done. And there will but be as, over time. But as yeah. to, it's as starting a base somewhere, start which point, is what I like. Exactly. I do yeah, like it's it starting really somewhere. Tell me about the um, Melissa Rolls is here for for the Bovida Cannabis Report we do every Monday at four twenty. Alan Park co-hosting Natish Sakuja and his lovely girlfriend, who's way too beautiful for him, uh, <laughs> Spliffs McKenzie. Now uh, I I Thanks, have man. another issue I want to bring up that we've talked about before, but these are two good ones. The the um, this driving under the influence mm-hmm. of of some sort of marijuana, whether it's an edible or you yeah. smoked it or whatever. How are they going to gauge this? And I think it is an important thing that that police need to the same way. They they would drink and drive. And that's my opinion. Yeah. That's uh, my opinion. For sure. I just think it's completely, I, it should be, you know, looked at, but it's completely different than drinking and driving. I think when yeah. things are mind altering that I'm sorry, the same, and don't get me wrong. I'm the same way with fucking texting. Yeah. It, it's right up there with it's texting safer and driving. It's to smoke and, and, smoke well, and I don't want know, to drive see, and text and drive. I, I think that's a, a conjectural statement. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you can yeah, just come out and say that. Yeah, of course, I have no facts, that. but yeah. I, I'm a comedian. That's yeah. all no, I do. No, no, I come out and say that But, but I, I am intri- I'm very intrigued to see how they monitor this situation. Um, so I actually did a little bit of research on that today. So basically, what I, I just want to present some some facts on two synergies that Fact really come one. up <laughs> in this. So, there's, so cannabis and opioids are incredibly synergistic. All right. Are you going to press the button? Yeah, no, no. It was oh, like okay. fact number one. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's Perfect. It. What's the synergy between... Um, uh... Well, because we have uh, opioid receptors in our body and we have cannabinoid receptors. Mm-hmm. So the opioid receptor is like an on and off switch, whereas the cannabinoid receptors is like a, it's a modulator, so like a dimmer. Right. So basically, they can actually be used hand in hand with one another. And I've been working with a neuroscientist who is actually putting together a whole presentation on this exact thing. So I'm going to let him when speak about it. When is this going to be uh, available for us to uh, see this presentation in a in a it should be in the next month or two okay yeah because it's, it's interesting to me that you're coming up with this after the police have already decided how well, they're going to legislate well, with all of this well, no, no, no but the, no but the thing is is that okay. so i spoke with the police today i called toronto police just to ask hey, them man. how they and handled and she was worried about filling Whoa. out that study in high school <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, okay, so basically with um, cannabis, what Cam H says is that cannabis impairs death perception, attention span, and concentration, slows reaction time, and decreases muscle strength and hand steadiness, all of which may affect a person's ability to drive safely. A study that I read earlier from the UBC by Dr. Chris Stewart Pat. Um, Patterson said that side effects of opioids include sedation, reduced attention, reduced short-term memory, reduced reaction time, reduced coordination, blurred vision, and minosis, all of which can adversely affect driving capability. So minosis, if no one knows what that is, it's exce- the excessive constriction of the pupil in your eye, just to give you, just so you know what that oh, word okay. is. Um, but so then when I was, I was like, okay, well, there's a lot of similarities between the effects of cannabis and opioids. So then I called Toronto Police and their response um, when I asked them, you know, what is their protocol when they're dealing with an opioid prescribed patient? They said, well, they would be treated as any other impaired driver. 
in that case. So taser. Okay. No, not a taser. <laughs> no, they would, they would, um, like, because they said all medications come with a warning not to operate any well, heavy machinery. Well, that's the thing. You, you see that, like, you see that with, uh, you know, your, your Benadryl. So, yeah. So. Well, he even said he made that comment about, you know, like, even cough syrup. He's like, if someone's too, they took a little bit too much cough syrup, they shouldn't be driving. And yep. if they can be. Hand sanitizer. Where are the tests, though? <laughs> where are the tests on people that are on some kind of pharmacy uh, prescription drug right now? Are you telling me that the, every single person who's out there right now is not under the influence of some kind of pharmacological agent? So, th so I spoke with a nurse as well. Was and she driving at the time? She, no, she was having her lunch. <laughs> well, then I don't she, like the answer. She was on her lunch break. Uh, well, you can't talk on the phone and drive unless it's Bluetooth, right? That's true. That's right? true, unless she pulled over. <laughs> no, so um, basically she was saying that you know, some patients can be stabilized on their medications. So if you can, if you know how to take your medication appropriately, then you can be stabilized on it. So for example, say you're just you use CBD products, you're not. It's not intoxicating. Right. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be deemed impaired. Or if you're even if you're doing like a one to one, like that could even be a debate as well. So um, I, I don't feel like uh, someone a brand new smoker should smoke and drive. You know, <laughs> but like someone who's seasoned. And no, like you know, they smoke. I don't know regularly. It's just smoking. I don't think you should but roll imagine, and drive. Imagine if an, al <laughs> yeah. imagine if an <laughs> alcoholic had that excuse. Yeah. Like, yeah, but it's interesting. But imagine an alcoholic had that excuse. Like, yeah, but alcohol you know and marijuana in, in, are very different. Yeah, but very, you're very, very, uh, very, listen, very, very, very I would different. never in my life. And and trust me, I'm no, I'm no Aaron Carter because Aaron Carter just said he would never uh, be uh, have a DUI and drive, and he just got busted for for for, sure. for doing His name stuff. Is this Aaron weekend. Carter. Yeah, <laughs> but but I was like I I am um, I'm a very good drinker, a very good drinker. I will never, ever, get behind a car. I just sure. won't do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Same very good drinker to the point where like I'm almost more normal when I drink. I'm almost more grounded. I'm more relaxed. I'm That's more, just uh, drunk uh, talks. Uh, you know, but, I, but but I still like That's I the would drunkest never. Thing I've ever heard and, in my and life. to the point like is, is right no now. no. But on, I'm not. Yeah, I'm drunk. Right <laughs> but I would. But I even would be like like if I could go behind a car, I think I would be fine. But I never would. I never and I I would and 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 no one ever should and I think you got to be careful when you say statements. Okay, I want to ask I want to yeah. ask you a question though. If you got to that, I don't know if we have time for this, but if we if only not, have about four minutes. Okay, so regarding the amount of THC or some kind of readable content in the body, this is where there's a problem. How can they read? everything that yeah. you're saying could let's just say it's all true, hundred percent true. Right? Mm -hmm. So I can I can blow that amount right now and maybe tomorrow and the next two or three days to the point where a policeman would go, okay, you're under the influence. We're getting these readings. Boom, boom, away you go. But marijuana, cannabis, I should say, stays in your body because it wants to stay in your body, whereas alcohol is trying to leave your body. Yeah. So to... to, to risk the specter and trust the police to do this that two three four weeks down the road if you blow over so to speak we, with cannabis it's, it's not a breathalyzer yeah it's, it's, it's a, a it's a self it's, it's a self a, yeah it's yeah. a it's however a they're working on breathalyzer right there's a company like called blow, they, they are right? but however they're arriving at the means though there's a test already a spit test a stand where they could take it off your forehead or mm -hmm. off your tongue and I'm just saying, like, how do we even gauge that as well, a fair and ride? And that's, this is the thing. So in the survey, they talked about, like, what's the best way to roll this out? And, you know, one of the questions or one of the answers is, is to re invest more money into technology, which is what needs to happen at the end of the day. Because you can't funnel this into the way that alcohol is funneled. You can try to do these sobriety right. tests and, you know, like, it will have some sort of effect, but it's not going to be I wonder if this will be the, conclusive. I wonder if this will be something that might delay legalization, actually. Mm -hmm. Like this specific, there's lack a lot of, of things on of the it. hunt that are going to delay yeah. legalization, and this is definitely one. of I them. think this might yeah. be one of them. Is is how do you detect what's in a driver system? Like just that platform mm -hmm. alone, which yeah, which is which is yeah, it's going to affect everybody. Which is kind of confusing because everyone's doing it anyway. I know what you mean, and you know I'm not condoning it, but I'm just saying there needs to be a way to measure it. We need to figure that out. Oh, I, I completely agree with that statement as well. But I mean, like at the end of the day, yeah, I figured it out. It's uh, <laughs> everyone who smokes weed or uh, has 
an edible and has something in their system, it's just got to go on a new uh, automated car, like uh, you know, a self-driving Uber. Yeah, I mean, everyone, a, that's, everyone... that's that, that we're all gonna be fucked up in about three years anyway <laughs> because no one's gonna be driving. Yeah. Who's hit by everyone, a driverless everyone car? Everyone has to go That'll by, by that thing. self-driving yeah, Tesla. Exactly. <laughs> driverless car accident report this morning. Where, you know, yeah, going Tesla owners are allowed getting <clears> fucked <throat> up. That's what we're getting out of it. weather together. The Tesla's first the traffic best. is the kind where no one's driving, oh, yeah. and the second kind is where they are driving. <laughs> Either way, there's accidents and death everywhere. But yeah. Well, and, you know, going back to that, the whole driving topic, I actually was reading a Fox News report. You did a lot of reading. I know. I okay. nonstop. Yeah. Okay. So there's a Fox News report, and they basically this was in the states. So the the study that was published in the American Journal of Public Health states that with legalization in the rec- recreational c- cannabis, um, it does not ha- it hasn't increased the rate of car accidents and deaths in those countries or in those um, state stories. So in California and uh, Washington State. Because we drive slower. That's not what we want to hear. <laughs> no, but, and but I've it, been in, I've been in LA. That's what I'm saying. There needs to be more studies. And I've been in LA where everyone is a very high in drives, mm-hmm. uh, no question. And I'm telling you, man, and I've spoken to people who've lived there their whole lives, they're like, People aren't honking in traffic anymore. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like, they realize it's going to take Bob some time. Bob Marley's to, playing. Yeah, like, they, like, exactly. Yeah, man. They have like, uh, they're all food trucks now they're driving. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I do think it's a great report. This is like, this is to exactly Melissa. And she only started three weeks ago with Bovida, Bovidinc.com, two-way humidity control pack. This is exactly what I wanted for this segment, is learning about what's going to happen towards legalization. Have these conversations. Open mm-hmm. up these talks for people as supposed to be like, Oh my God, it's the devil's lettuce. No, it's like, let's figure out a way, the way we've figured out a way with alcohol to make sure that there are some concrete points Mm -hmm. towards legalization and how we measure those and how we have it available for those who need it. And I'm such a supporter of it and I fully condone it. But I do know that things like driving under it and and even smoking in open areas, which is also being done in that state, like all these little things I think need to be discussed and we need to figure out. We need Mm -hmm. to figure at least by the law what is kind of stated. Anyway, I appreciate it. Well, and like I mentioned before is that, you know, it's going to start super strict, then they're going to add in the plumbing. Uh, with the laws that come out, so yeah, it's like marriage. <laughs> Super strict. <laughs> <laughs> I know where that's going right away. Yeah. Once you get. The- Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Natasha Kuja, nice to see you. Sorry to have enough yeah. time. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, can we uh, have your lovely girlfriend back? Of course. Yeah. Thanks for asking for us. Without you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, spl- at, at Spliffs McKenzie? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And uh, and and a great advocate of, of, of the entire legalization of medical marijuana and does a lot of great posts on her Instagram. Heavily followed there. Uh, and we do appreciate awesome. it. Of course, Melissa Rolston. Yeah, from Mm -hmm. Woman Grow and Bovida Inc., bovidainc.com.